Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rechan Kodash. Double honors to the ghosts of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that continually rule very well to this very day. That is continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And also Shalom to the whole elect, who is also laboring his work and his labor of love. Give your diligence in spreading this ministry and this gospel to the other members of the whole elect of the nation of Israel in all faith, truth, and sincerity, and in all charity. Now, uh, the topic of this video is uh, going to be entitled Trump, the embodiment of Esau's pride. Or should I say the display of Esau's pride? All right, and when I say Esau, that is the progenitor of who is known today as the, the so called white man, in which Esau is the progenitor of the Edomites, in which that's the true bibl biblical nationality of the so called white man. You know, Trump, you know, since uh, we had uh, a recent occurrence to where, you know, they had a trial of an impeachment not too long ago. And, you know, it turns out that uh, they decided not to impeach Trump. Which uh, we here in the know, we already know why. Uh, they didn't move forward with uh, impeachment in which overall you know the reason why he's still in office to this very day and it didn't go through it, through with it really it goes back to the spirit of Yahweh about Shemel Shai because really you know this, this guy DJ Trump like I mentioned at the title of the, I mentioned the title of the video is that He's the embodiment of the pride of all you Edomites. And that's why, you know, in America is so divided between the Edomites is because you got ones that that show their true horns and who they really are. And then you got other Edomites that decide not to show their true horns, but to put on a persona that they're for everybody. You know, they're for... Uh, Giving uh, you know, basically, you know, for everybody that's uh, in which um, you know, they they normally lean to uh, the left, or should I say, the uh, Democratic Party, you know, in which you know we're we're privy on uh, the uh, Republican and Democratic Party, in which you know it's nothing new from um, the Roman system that was set up back then when you had the the plebeians and the patricians, you know. Because uh, the modern day uh, plebeians are the Democratic Party, and uh, the modern day patricians is the uh, the Republican Party. All right. And again, like I mentioned before, you know that's why you got Edomites that that uh, some Edomites that that hate Trump and want him out of office because really Esau can't stand to see his true his true nature all right because the way that uh trump operates you know that's the true nature of all you edomites okay that proud look um basically the mannerisms of, of, of trump is how all you edomites really should be <laughs> should be conducting yourselves man you know I mean, just just go ahead and uh, come out with it, you know. But like I mentioned before, you know, the, this whole thing that went down with the uh, impeachment trial, you know, that's uh, that's basically what what just uh, took place in which he wasn't impeached. You know, that's through the spirit, man. And we're gonna see uh, more things to come. And you know, I call it right now, man. You know, uh, if they decide to have uh, the next election 
you know, it could very well be that, that Trump might take office for another four years, you know. But, you know, we're not even looking that far, you know. Because anything could happen from today on forward. All right? It's only a matter of time before it more things concerning prophecy start to happen all right but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and jump into the precepts that i have here uh concerning the edomites and um your modern day ruler <laughs> your pharaoh uh dj trump okay this is uh, the book of daniel chapter 7 and this is at verse 20 it says, in the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, right? In which uh, the ten horns uh, represents uh, the EU. Okay? When you go into the beast with uh, seven heads and ten horns. All right, that beast with seven heads and ten horns, those uh, seven heads and ten horns represents NATO and the EU. All right? And out of uh, out of Europe, in which I believe you go uh, first up, if I'm not mistaken, where it says uh, whom three fell. When you go into the three that fell, uh, really, that goes into the uh, the three wars that uh, took place here in America. All right, you had uh, the Spanish American War. Then you had the French that went to war. And then you had uh, the War of Independence. But you have the, the British versus uh, versus America, which they were known as uh, Patriots. The ones that uh, were fighting for independence. All right. And then the last war that took place, the, the war of independence, what came out of that was uh, the Declaration of Independence in 1776. And uh, shortly before that, uh, in May 1776, you had uh, people, people calling the Illuminati, but the, the secret government that you never hear about in media which started with uh, Meyer and Michelle Bauer they came together and formed the secret society All right, and then the month after they, they declared uh, America's independence and, and then that's when America was established alright as an independent nation or country should I say all right. So again, it says in the ten horns that were in his head, and the other which came up, and before whom three fell, right? Which I just explained: the Spanish, the French, and the British. Even of, of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, and that's your your president, whose look was more stout than his fellows, right? His look was more stout than his fellows, and that's that's the pride. Of your Edom, of you Edomites in, in full display, and uh, a, a, a very good example is when you know you had a a gathering. I don't remember which which uh, which it was. I think it was a, either a conference or a meeting that went on between the uh, the European nations, in which you had Trump that stormed in there, <laughs> knocking elbows, trying to get in. All right. That's the, uh, again, man, that's the true nature of you Edomites, man. All right? It's only a matter of time before, you know, that the, the horns start to show more and more with all of you Edomites, man. All right? You know, we'll have more respect for you guys if you just go ahead and come out with it, man. And come out with your true nature. Don't sugarcoat anything. Just, just do what you got to do, man. All right? That's why when that time comes, when all hell breaks loose, that's when they're really going to show their horns. All right. Pursuing to uh, 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter, 
in the 70th version says uh, they're, they're going to be like madmen sparing none. It's talking about the Edomites. All right. Now I'm going to go on from there. Now I'm going to go to uh, the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, and it's at the fifth verse. It says, Yea, also because he transgresseth uh, by wine. Right, and what, what's that uh, That wine? The, the, the wine represents the philosophies and the doctrine of America, the, the Western way of life. That's the wine, all right? He is a proud man. <laughs> See, it's talking about your Edomites, okay? Because the really man, the pride of Esau, knows no bounds, man. All right? It says, neither keep it that home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's also true. All right. He doesn't keep at home. That's why everywhere you go on the planet Earth, no matter what, what uh, so-called country you go to, Esau has a military base in that so-called country. All right. So no matter where you go, and you got Jake that's talking about uh, getting passports and leaving leaving America to go to another so-called country. Well, guess what? Even if you go there, right? Even if you go to the, uh, that so-called country that you want to go to and get your passport, it's already been westernized, man. All right? Now, I will say this. The only place you'll go to is uh, the, uh, you know, you got some... Uh, so-called countries that you got uh, Ishmael, which are the so-called Arabs, you know, they still try to hold on and, and maintain their way of living. But everywhere else you go, it's westernized, man. Okay? Alright, uh, verse 6, it says, uh, Shall not all these take up a parable against them? In a taunting proverb against them and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. So that's why, again, Esau or Edom, you know, he tries to gather all these different nations and uh, to, to heap, heap them up and to uh, and make, basically make a, a, a foothold and to put his own landmark on these different lands. All right? So it says, Woe unto him that increases that which is not his. Okay? It says, How long? And to him that laid it himself with thick clay. All right? And when you go into clay, that word clay in the Hebrew is uh, I, I bought yet. Which means uh, debt. All right. If you're going to the root word of the of the the Hebrew word I bought yet, it's uh that that root word of that is I bought, which means servitude. Okay. Because if you go into the dynamics of currency, you had a you have a bartering system. You have gold and silver, right? You have gold and silver, right? You have a bartering system. You have, uh, and then you have uh, debt, in which debt is the currency of slaves. It's the currency of, of servants. All right. But I'm moving from there. I'm going to get the next precept. This is Isaiah chapter 19. And, um, it's like it. Uh, Isaiah chapter 19, uh, verse 1. All right, and this is what I mean earlier about Esau being divided because, uh, because of course, you know, Trump is in office, all right? And there's going to be even more division amongst amongst these Edomites, man. You know, we're, we're, we're witnessing the division and the breakdown of this man's system. Okay? So again, in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1, it says the burden of Egypt, right? Now, going to the book of revelations it speaks about the city which is spiritually called sodom and egypt 
All right. Now, this is the city that that scripture is talking about in Revelations, the city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. All right. The reason why it's deemed that is because this is the land of our captivity. And this is where you, you'll find all types of filthiness and freakism that goes on here in America. All right. This, this is this is where you will find it. This is where uh, this is the source. OK. It says the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shah rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence in the heart of Egypt shall melt. In the midst, in the midst of it, verse two, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Right now, it's not talking about your literal Egyptians, you know, the uh, which are known today as the, uh, the so-called Sudanese. All right, the modern-day Egyptians today is talking about the Edomites in this scripture. All right. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Right. So you're gonna have different faction of of Edomites in this so-called country, America, Babylon the Great, which is again spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt, that's gonna come against each other. You're gonna have patriots. You're gonna have those that that are so-called vigilantes. You're gonna have all all types of of Edomites that are here. In America, all right, freedom fighters, <laughs> so called freedom fighters, should I say? And they're gonna fight against each other, man. They're gonna come up against each other, and you're seeing that right now. You're seeing divisions amongst, amongst Esau, all right? And it's beautiful because the Most High is dividing Esau and he's bringing together Israel. See that? Now, uh, I'm going to go on from there. I'm going to grab one last precept. Please, and Matthews. All right, it's the book of Matthews, uh, chapter 12. Uh, verse uh, 25 it says and Yahweh Shai when these people inwardly called Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand so the house of Esau is divided against itself alright and since the house of Esau is divided against itself it can't stand all right, and once again, like I mentioned before, it's only a matter of time before it implodes on itself. Okay. Uh, verse twenty-six it says, "And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand?" See. So how can Esau's kingdom, because Esau is the adversary of Israel, in which if you go into uh, adversary, or should I say, if you go into the word uh, Satan? Which uh, the Hebrew word for that is shatan, which means adversary. All right. So I said, if Satan casts out Satan, so if the adversary cast out the adversary, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So how can the kingdom of Esau stand if he's divided against himself? All right. Case in point, uh, uh, I'll give you another example. Um, when Britain. Exited out of the the, uh, the EU, Brexit. All right, that is a, 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 an example of Esau's kingdom divided against itself. Okay, and since that's that's happening, his kingdom can't stand. All right, so as time goes on, man, we, we're going to start to see more and more division uh, of Esau a division of the house of Esau and his system is going to continue to crumble 
And guess what? At the same time, the nation of Israel is still going to continue to be built. The house of David is still being built up. All right, those breaches are being closed and the elect are being gathered until the day that Yahweh shall returns. All right. But that's all I wanted to bring out in this video. It's uh, this lesson I uh, put together through the spirit. Uh, Lord's will is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. And until next time, once again, I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well to this very day. Also, Shalom, peace and safety and salutations to the whole elect that is also laboring this work that's plowing to show forth uh, your faith by doing this work and giving all diligence to make your calling and election sure in faith, in truth, sincerity, and all charity. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.